Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Gebo the Chaman, and today we are talking about what happens when we have Rahu placed in the ninth house in your birth chart. So before we begin, I'd just like to let you guys know that I am a Vedic Astrologer. I do Vedic Astrology readings professionally, so you can check those out at my website, GeboTheShaman.com. Alright, and the link is down below in the description as well. And, um, so I have my Vedic Astrology certification courses where you can become a certified Vedic Astrologer by following my system and how I give astrology readings, so, um, and with that you'll get your own website and PayPal button kind of thing, so, yeah, it's a great opportunity to become a Vedic Astrologer professionally, so. And then we have the readings where I focus on your career, your relationships, and your and just a basic general reading. Um, and then we have the birth time rectification. So, um, so that is great for people who don't know their exact birth time but would like to know that. Uh, so I ask you some pretty simple questions and. Uh, Get, get your birth chart or your birth time down to the span of one minute. Alright, so that's my stuff. That's like a lot of what I have to offer. Plus, you can check out my Qigong courses. Um, so, yeah, um, let's see here. So, Rahu. In the ninth house. Um, so Rahu, so in order to understand this placement better we need to understand what Rahu means and then we'll talk about what the ninth house means. We'll put them together and we'll create our own analysis from that. So, all right, so what is Rahu? So Rahu is the planet of um, addictions uh, and unfulfilled desires. So Rahu, if you don't know, is a, uh, they call him a demon in the Vedic myths and the Vedic um, texts. However, it's not a demon in the Christian sense, it's just a, like an earthly spirit kind of thing that wants to enjoy food, uh, enjoy sex, enjoy all kinds of earthly things, like earthly pleasures um, involving the senses. So, um, so Rahu is addictions, compulsions, um, uh, it's, it's habits, things like that. So Rahu is the, like I said, uh, Rahu is a demon, just not in the, just not in the Christian sense. Um, Rahu is a demon, like I said, but it's also it. It's a demon with his head cut off. So we have two opposite ends of the spectrum: the north node, which would be Rahu; the south node, which would be Ketu. And so Rahu is the head, and Ketu is the body. So what Rahu wants to do is to incorporate Ketu or what what he wants to do I guess unconsciously is incorporate Ketu so to become a whole to become uh, fulfilled to have his desires met things like that so so basically Rahu has all these impulses all these addictions all these um, like uh, just these things that control him. So he basically, he'll eat 
and eat and eat and want to feel full and satiated. However, since he has no body, he's just a detached head, uh, the food just falls right through his neck and onto the floor. So he can't feel whole. He can't feel satiated. Um, so he's always left with unfulfilled desires. And so this is Rahu. This is the essence of Rahu. Um, you know, it's like, uh, so anyway, um, so then, uh, the, the ninth house, so, so if we have Rahu in the ninth house, what does the ninth house mean? So, ninth house is the house of the guru, the house of the teacher, the house of philosophy, spirituality, religion, um, the house of higher education, the house of teachers, gurus, priests, things like that. So, this is very, <laughs> just a very challenging um, placement to have. Um, however, it gives you a lot of, a lot of, um, passion and power to go after, you know, the, the spiritual teachings, the, the philosophies that you resonate with. It, it, it like, it lends its, uh, its strength and power to that. So, so Rahu in the ninth house, um, you know, one of the things about this is like, if you have this placement, you'll be very strongly, uh, drawn to, um, to spirituality, spirituality, uh, spiritual teachings. Uh, so, you know, one of the things with this is it gives you a desire. So Rahu is a desire, or desires. It's, it gives you a desire to, to go to those things that really, um, you know, empower you spiritually. Uh, so, you know, this it would be like uh, someone who's really drawn to spirituality and spiritual teachings, spiritual philosophies uh, like Buddhism or like uh, you know any any good like spiritual philosophy or teaching. Um, so, so what Rahu does here is he thinks that's going to satisfy him. So he will go towards spirituality with, uh, you know, with force and with uh, vigor. Like, it's just this, this thing that he can't get enough of. So he will consume uh, spiritual texts, you know, read all about, uh, you know, all kinds of all kinds of spiritual and ph philosophical texts and books and all kinds of stuff and um, and go to teachers and gurus and um, so there's like this sense of looking for something that you can't find like maybe it's peace maybe it's just peace of mind maybe it's um healing like from 
emotional wounds or traumas or things like that. Um, but you go full force towards these things. And then what happens is you might realize while you're searching for different gurus or teachers or spiritual philosophies or principles to live by, that none of them really satisfy you. None of them really um, give you that feeling of wholeness and completeness. Um, and why is that? Because until you know yourself, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you could have all the, all the teachings in the world, but if you don't, um, you know, it, it's like having that process of self-awareness and, uh, you know, full acceptance of yourself. So, what this placement wants to teach us is that um, it can, so this placement can really, like if you have this placement, you can become a really good spiritual teacher. Like you would be one of those teachers who would be preaching on street corners and telling everybody this is what you are supposed to do and all that. Uh, so Rahu is the deceiver also. Rahu deceives, he, um, you know, just like kind of he'll lead you to believe one thing and then he'll say he'll tell you oh look look how you got deceived by that see that's your own that's your own lack of understanding or your own lack of um critical thinking uh that you know he'll rahu is attachment so he will use our attachments to spiritualizing things and spirituality uh, to kind of like trick us so in other words um, you know it's it's a this this position can be like someone could be a preacher however They, it's, it's almost like a corrupt preacher in a way, like you could be preaching about, you know, it's kind of like that guy, uh, Jimmy Swagger or whatever his name is, but he, he was a preacher for like a lot of years and, um, it finally came out that he was like doing all these bad things behind closed doors and cheating on his wife with like a a prostitute and all this stuff that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of a uh, placement this is rahu in the ninth house it's like you want to we you want to get that spiritual power so that you can use it not for not for spiritual evolution not for spiritual growth but to um but to feed your your ego, your, uh, you know, so you can become this authority, this teacher, this, this honored figure, but then you use it for bad things, so, um, you know, it, it's, <laughs> that's the kind of energy here, um, so, uh, let's see. How am I on time? Oh yeah, I'm pretty good. So, anyway guys, uh, anything else I could add to this? 
No, I think I'm good. So, um, thank you for watching, and we will talk to you next time. Alright, so if you're interested in anything that I have to offer, then you can go to gebotheshaman.com. And uh, I have my courses on sale, my book, my, uh, my book is actually coming out pretty soon. But I have my uh, courses, services, products, everything and anything that you could ever want is right there. <laughs> uh, the, these are the tools for spiritual growth and evolution. Just if you, if you want to really take your spiritual growth to the next level, self-transformation challenge. Those are great courses and, and uh, will take you to the next level of your spiritual evolution. Alright, so we have the Vedic Astrology Certification course. So that is designed to take you through all the steps of how I give my own Vedic Astrology readings to my clients. And not only that, but also... Um, it's like how uh, to kind of set up your business and uh, like once you pass the certification exam, I will give you your own website and um, and then you can, you know, start making money as a Vedic astrologer. And then we have the Vedic astrology readings, so, you know, it's... I have my, my standard reading that I do for every client, and then I have readings where I go into uh, into depth about your relationships and your career and things like that, so those are all great uh, astrology consultations. Then we have the birth time rectification, so if you are not sure what your birth time is to the exact minute. Um, or you maybe have questions about it, or like, you know, maybe there's inaccuracies in it, I can rectify your birth chart. That means that I can bring it to, I can give you the right time that you were born to within one minute. That is something that not a lot of astrologers can do. That is a very difficult task, and it is why I charge so much, so... <laughs> Um, it does take a lot of time for me to do that, too, so, um, so, there's that, um, so, birth time rectification, and then we have the Qigong courses, so, Cosmic Qigong and the Self-Transformation Challenge, so this is just a beginner's Qigong courses, uh, Qigong course, and this one over here is, uh, combines Qigong with Kundalini Yoga, you can see me doing some Kundalini Yoga there. Um, it combines Qigong, Kundalini Yoga, and the lightning energy of the heart center, and uh, gives you a guided meditation. So if you stick with that course and do it every single day for a minimum of 90 days and preferably six months to a year, you will see extraordinary profound growth in your spiritual life and you will uh, heal from all kinds of things and grow and ch and you know begin changing the way you think and things like that so it's a great opportunity for growth and change all right so if you want to kick your 2023 off to a good start get that course all right so is. Then we have the career coaching and the life coaching. So I am a career coach. That means that I guide you to what is best for you. There, there is no best career for any, for everybody. Like it all depends on what you want to do. So if you don't know what you want to do with your life. If you're very confused, if you're challenged, if you're um, not completely sure what you want to do with your life and you're not going towards that with all of your energy, then the career coaching and life coaching can really help you there. 
All right, and then we have the life coaching. So the life coaching, I am uh, going to be focusing more on um, on childhood trauma uh, because that's something that I had to deal with and so that's something that I like to help my clients with. All right, and then we have the uh, the uh, emotional awareness course. So that also is regarding childhood trauma and things like that. So you can check that out as well. And I'll be adding more to that as time goes by. All right, guys. So that's about it for me. Um, Check out everything that I have to offer at GabboTheShaman.com, and we will talk to you next time. Peace.